Good morning, you two. I hope that you're having a great day so far and enjoying doing home learning. We are going to be beginning our English session, so I hope that you've got everything that you need um, ready to begin. So today in English, we are going to be focusing on trying a particular grammar skill. So today, the date is Thursday, the 7th of January, 2021. And the learning objective is use commas in a list. So please pause the video so that you can write the dates and learning objective in your English book. Brilliant, well done you two. So as you can see on the screen, we have our thinking boxes, thinking around how we can be successful when writing instructions, because of course this week and next week, that is what we're going to be focusing on. So just to explain to your adult that's helping you at home, as you can see in the centre of our thinking boxes, you can see the purpose of instructions, which is to explain how to do something. The audience of our instructions will be entirely up to you and who you would like to share your writing with. If we look at the next box, zooming out, we have key features of instructions. So as we discussed yesterday, when writing instructions, we write in the present tense. When thinking about the layout of the instructions, there's a title, an introduction, a section on what you need, a section on what you do, and a top tip. When zooming out again and thinking about the grammar skills that we're going to be using, today in particular we are focusing on trying to use commas and lists as that is a new skill for us in year two. And we will also be focusing on using imperative verbs sometimes known as bossy verbs, they are a command asking someone to do something. So there's examples there, put, fold, cover. We can add detail to our verbs by using adverbs to describe how those actions are happening. So for example, carefully, slowly. And it's also important that we use time conjunctions to sequence our instructions. Again, here's some examples, first, next, then, after that, and finally. So that is almost our picture of success to start our lesson with today. So first of all, I thought it'd be good to engage in discussion at home about what is a comma? So I know some of us use them already, particularly um, perhaps when using expanded noun phrases, when there's more than one adjective before the noun. So I wonder if you can have a conversation at home to answer the questions, what is a comma? What does it look like? And what is it used for? So perhaps pause the video here and have a conversation. Brilliant, well done. So a comma looks like this. And it's a type of punctuation mark that tells us to take a short pause when we are reading. The pause is not as long as with a full stop. We're going to explore now how commas can be used. And today we're going to be looking at how commas are used to separate items in a list so that when we write our instructions towards the end of next week on how to make a boat that floats, we can use commas in a list when writing the section, what you need. So let's have a look at an example here. There's a picture of a fruit bowl. It looks like there's lots of delicious fruit. And there's a sentence in black written above it, which says, the fruit bowl has oranges and bananas and pears and kiwis and apples in it. What is wrong with using and between each item in a list? Please pause the video here and have a conversation at home. Brilliant, well done you two. So as we can see here, I found it quite a mouthful to read that sentence without taking a pause because there was a lot of ands in that sentence. There was an and between every item of fruit. Um, so like I said, it's quite a mouth mouthful to read. So we're gonna have a look at this sentence again. Um, as you can see, the same pictures there in the same sentence. And we're gonna have a think about taking out the word and. So I wonder if you could pause the video here and have a conversation at home 
And you may choose to write this sentence, um, removing and. Fantastic. So let's have a look together. So let's take out the word and. I'm just going to get the line ready. Fantastic. So the fruit bowl has oranges and, so I'm going to cross it out with a single line, just like we would in our book if we'd made a mistake. Bananas and pears and kiwis and apples in it. Brilliant. So I've taken out all of the ands. Hmm. Now looking at that sentence we've improved, we need to think about using one and in the sentence. But where should it go? Of course, I've crossed them all out as I'm assuming you have when you were having a go at home. But we do need one and when writing a list. Have a conversation at home. Which and do you think we will keep hold of? Where should it go? Well done for discussing it and having a go at home. So when we write um, items in a list and we use commas to separate those items, we must always keep one and between the last two items in the list. So as you can see here, the fruit bowl has oranges, bananas, pears, kiwis, apples in it. So the last two items in the list are kiwis and apples. So as they are the two last items, I'm going to keep the word and. So I'm just going to read the improved sentence to you now. The fruit bowl has oranges, bananas, pears, kiwis, and apples in it. So, and remains between the last two items in the list. So we've now improved that sentence using one and, and now we're going to separate the other items in our list to avoid confusion. And this is where the commas come in handy. So the rule of using commas in a list is that a comma is put between each item in the list, but the last two items always have and between them and no comma. Okay, so and is in the place of the comma. Using that rule, can you rewrite the sentence below using commas in a list to separate the items? Please pause the video here and have a go in your English book. Well done, you two. We're going to go through this together now and I'm going to try my very best whilst writing on the laptop mouse pad to write as neatly as you have in your English book. So I've got my purple pen out as I'm going to make some improvements, some edits to make this writing even better. So the fruit bowl has oranges. Oranges is an item in the list. That's the first item. So I'm going to add a comma between oranges and bananas to separate those items. So the fruit bowl has oranges, comma, bananas, comma. So I'm using another comma, comma to separate bananas and pears. Now I can see that there's also kiwis in this list. So I'd need another comma to separate pears and kiwis. So the fruit bowl has oranges, comma, bananas, comma, pears, comma, kiwis and apples in it. Oh, I can see kiwis, kiwis and apples are the last two items. So I need to separate them. So I'm going to add a comma here. Oh, that, I'm not sure that looks right. Oh, I feel a bit confused here too. Can you pause the video here and have a conversation at home? Should I use a comma after kiwis? Or, or not? What do you think? Pause the video and have a conversation at home. Well done, you two, you're right. So the word and acts in the place of the comma between the last two items in the list. As you can see, the word and separates kiwis and apples. So we do not need a comma between the last two items. Well done. Okay, moving on, we have our first English activity for today. Please look at the pictures and write a shopping list for each character using commas to separate each item. 
of course, except for when using and between the last two items. So as you can see here, we have Des, Simone and Artem. Des has gone shopping and there is a picture of the items that Des has bought and a sentence next to his picture, which says Des went shopping and bought eggs, broccoli, cheese and cereal. As you can see, commas have been used to separate each item. So we have a comma after eggs, a comma after broccoli, and we have the word and in between cheese and cereal, okay? I'd love you to have a go at writing a sentence to describe what Simone and what Artem bought when they went shopping, thinking about practicing our skill of using commas in a list. Please pause the video and have a go at this activity. Well done, you two. I hope you enjoyed writing your shopping lists and hopefully you've reviewed your learning with somebody at home. This morning, there's another activity which is really exciting. I thought you would enjoy creating your own list and using commas to separate each item, except for when using and in between the last two items. So here is an activity. Choose a sentence starter or roll a dice if you have one to pick a sentence starter to begin with. So for example, I might roll the dice and um, I roll the number three. Oh, number three says, if I won a million pounds, I would buy. Oh, what would I buy? So I might say, if I won a million pounds, I would buy a swimming pool, comma, a warm fluffy coat, comma. Oh, what would I buy? Um, some new shoes and lots of fruit, okay? So that's just an example, thinking on the top of my head um, of one. So if you don't have a dice, please don't worry, just have a look and pick a sentence starter that you would like to, um, to use. You may choose to do more than one. So it'd be great to see you challenging yourselves whilst working at home. And I'm really excited to see your own lists. So please pause the video here and have a go at task number two. And I really look forward to seeing your home learning, um, which should be uploaded to your portfolio. So thank you so much, year two. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning. Take care.